Right friends, welcome back to 29th week. This week is from 13th July to 19th July. We are going to discuss uh, important uh, events of the week. Let us look at the highlights. Uh, first one is uh, PM launched Skill India program or Naipunya Bharat program to coincide with uh, World Skill Day which was observed on 15th July. Kane Bethwa link will be the first river link project as uh, stated by the Union Water Resources Minister Uma Bharti. Can Bethwa link this is uh, in Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. Other important aspect is center clears Eastern Peripheral Expressway. Eastern Peripheral Expressway reduces uh, pollution, reduces uh, traffic in the national capital region. DOT appointed net neutrality panel gives its report. The report says uh, over the top players like uh, Skype, uh, Viber can be charged for domestic calls. When you look at international events, at last third bailout package for Greece at 86 billion euro was cleared after 17 hours of uh, marathon discussions. Iran nuclear deal finally agreed by the six world powers with Iran, biggest refugee population from a single conflict in a generation, that is where Syria stands today. Look at the miscellaneous events, Mahatma Gandhi Narega, the world's largest public works program, says World Bank, Millennium Development Goals of 2000 to 2015, most successful anti-poverty movement in India, says United Nations. Look at the sports, the owners of two IPL teams suspended for two years, serious punishment against Mayappan as well as Raj Kundra. Then Sanya Mirja creates history by winning women's doubles title at Wimbledon and Serena Williams wins her 21st Grand Slam title. So these are the important highlights. Right friends, look at the first and the foremost event. The Prime Minister launched a Skill India program or otherwise a Naipunya Bharat program. Prime Minister says China is recognized as a manufacturing factory and India should be recognized as a human resource capital for the world. India should be recognized as human resource capital for the world and the Prime Minister also said IITs got worldwide fame in 20th century and ITIs should get the same in 21st century. IITs are the world reputed institutions in 20th century and ITIs should get the same reputation in 21st century. This is as per the words of the Prime Minister. Two, three important programs I will tell you. Under the Skill India program, Various programs were launched and the ultimate goal of the government is to train 40 crore workers by 2022. To train 40 crore people by 2022, that is the first and the foremost thing. Second important aspect is skill loan scheme was launched. Skill loan scheme was launched. Under this program, credit will be given ranging from rupees 5000 to rupees 150000 per each person to 34 lakh youth during the next 5 years under the skill loan scheme loans will be granted ranging from rupees 5000 to rupees 150000 to train 34 lakh people during the next 5 years right the other important aspect is under Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana, government plans to train 24 lakh youth during this financial year itself. Three figures, please don't forget. Government wants to develop skills to 40 crore youth of this country by 2022. Second point is under the skill loan scheme, loans ranging from 5,000 rupees to 1,50,000 rupees will be given to 34 lakh youth 
during the next 5 years and under pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana 24 lakh youth will be trained during the current year itself right friends please don't forget world youth skills day was observed on 15th july in 2014 united nations agreed for this world youth skills day and accordingly this year this was observed on july 15th looking to the next one government recently held fifth meeting of the special committee for interlinking of rivers all of you please note this interlinking of rivers is a old topic but not making much headway whatever the reason but recently fifth meeting of the special committee was held and in this connection the minister for water resources uma bharti stated that the ken betwa link will be the first project under interlinking of rivers ken betwa link involves uttar pradesh as well as madhya pradesh and this will be developed as the first project in the country and the other projects in pipeline are par tapi narmada link par tapi narmada link please look into this picture this is in western part of the country probably involves maharashtra as well as gujarat similarly daman ganga and pinjal link this is also in western part of the country daman ganga pinjal link third one is mahanadi godavari link involves uh, odisha as well as uh, andhra pradesh kosi khagra link in northern part of the country involving nepal as well as uh, bihar and another important project in eastern part of the country is manas sankosh tirtha and ganga link this manas sankosh these two rivers are in assam tirtha river passes through sikkim and west bengal then ganga this involves the linking in the eastern part of the country so government wants to streamline these projects also right and full details we are not discussing here and we will discuss sometime later when the actual progress of these projects take place right looking to the next issue center clears eastern peripheral expressway this was the old project this was contemplated to be completed prior to commonwealth games in 2010 initially tenders were called and reliance infrastructure was the sole builder in 2008 somehow this contract was not awarded at the time and this project now going to be taken up this is eastern peripheral expressway this connects faridabad with sonipat and it goes through greater noida as well as ghaziabad please don't forget faridabad is in haryana sonipat is in haryana and greater noida and ghaziabad are in uttar pradesh they are around delhi so this will become eastern part of the ring road for delhi this is eastern part of the ring road of delhi this along with western peripheral expressway will make complete ring road around delhi the advantage here is traffic congestion in delhi will be reduced second important point is pollution levels will be reduced in delhi because of this two this project assumes a lot of significance and this is 135 kilometers long involving 7558 crores of expenditure and government wants to fast track this project and this is the sixth laning of the project and this is from faridabad to sonipat which passes through greater noida as well as ghaziabad please don't forget looking to the next issue dot appointed net neutrality panel gives its report net neutrality panel was appointed by the department of telecommunications advisor for technology dot mr bhargava headed the committee and they gave its report i would like to tell you two points because government is yet to take decision once government takes decision then we can discuss in detail and before that let us discuss two three important points first and the foremost point is uh, the committee suggested domestic calls made through over the top players like skype whatsapp viber are to be charged at par with telecom players at par with the telecom players like airtel vodafone domestic calls made through skype or viber or whatsapp are also to be charged that is the first important recommendation you may ask what is net neutrality net neutrality is giving equal treatment to 
the entire internet traffic without discrimination you may also ask what is ott players who are the top players who are the top players normally take some infrastructure as the base over the top players take some telecom infrastructure as the base and they have their operations over the base of some telecom infrastructure right that's why they are called over the top players over the top players are skype whatsapp they don't have their own infrastructure they use the infrastructure of other companies like airtel or uh, vodafone that's why they are called over the top players so the panel recommendation is uh, over the top players also to be charged for domestic calls second thing is services like internet.org should not be allowed because it may lead to prioritizing certain sites it may finally go against the principles of net neutrality the committee felt however for allowing airtel zero it requires the permission of uh, troy as stated by the committee these are the important recommendations and let us look at the next event that is around the world first and the foremost of course the greece crisis finally it is solved after 17 hours of marathon debate finally greece bailout package was agreed to right and i would like to tell you since 2008 greece is in a debt crisis in the economic downturn greece was badly hit and subsequently they could not uh, service their debts they could not uh, pay back to the creditors and subsequently two times the bailout packages were given in 2010 73 billion euro bailout package was given in the year 2012 154 billion euro bailout package was given and here three organizations are involved european central bank international monetary fund and european commission and these three are called trica and they held discussions with greece and finally for giving 86 billion euro it was decided the third bailout package will be 86 billion euro that means to bring greece out of crisis 86 billion euro package was decided after the discussions and if you want to look at the gdp Greece GDP is hardly 220 billion euro population is around 11 million and government debt is 320 billion euro and as per the news reports the overall external debt is around 160 to 180% of uh, GDP it is very high if you take india it is just 23% or 24% of our gdp and during the past 4 5 years greece economy suffered badly whenever they are giving bailout package they insist on austerity measures reduce expenditure because of which the economy shrunk by 25% during the past 4 years and look at the details of the deal 86 billion euro will be given from european stability mechanism and imf this 86 billion euro package will be used for strengthening banks for paying back debts as well as paying back interest payments this 86 billion euro will be used and 7.16 billion euro will be given as bridge loan bridge loan is a short term mechanism and most important point is greece will create 50 billion euro trust fund by privatizing certain assets by privatizing its government assets greece will create 50 billion euro trust fund and several austerity measures are imposed again and look at these austerity measures banking system is to be reformed second important point is tax is to be increased vat already increased from 13% to 23% overall judicial system is to be revamped that is speeding up of court cases then raising taxes for farmers then phasing out early retirements 
privatizing assets to pull up 50 billion euro we have already discussed so these are all the austerity measures because of these austerity measures only time can say whether greece will come out of that crisis or the economy will further shrink only time can say and regarding the greece deal and its origin we discussed elaborately under news analysis and features please listen to news analysis and features the other important international event is the iran nuclear deal what is iran nuclear deal the deal is between iran as well as uh, six uh, advanced nations sometimes they are called p5 plus 1 you may have a doubt what is p5 plus 1 p5 or five permanent members of united nations along with germany what are the permanent members of uh, United Nations Security Council the permanent members five permanent members are there they are United States of America Russia China France and United Kingdom these five are the permanent members of a security council in United Nations these five countries along with Germany total six countries held discussions with Iran finally a deal was drawn and sometimes they are called e3+3 also three countries of european union that is france germany and united kingdom and other three countries they are russia united states of america and china right so why this deal is required we are going to discuss in detail 30th week's news analysis part but i would like to explain what exactly is this deal in this lecture part advanced nations for the past several years are contemplating that iran is building nuclear weapons right because of that contention economic sanctions were imposed in the year 2006 economic sanctions were imposed against iran during the year 2006 and for the past 12 years talks are going on between these six advanced nations and iran talks are going on for the past 12 years and finally it was agreed and the salient features are iran agreed to get rid of 98% of its stockpile of enriched uranium what is enriched uranium i would like to tell you normal uranium contains around 0.7% of u235 normal natural uranium contains 0.7% of u235 increasing the content of u235 is enrichment of uranium increasing the percentage of u235 in natural uranium is enrichment of uranium and for enrichment of uranium centrifuges will be used we are going to discuss in detail during the use analysis part of 30th week but i would like to explain in brief first point enriched uranium enriched uranium can be used for making nuclear bombs enriched uranium can be used for making nuclear bombs and iran will get rid of 98% of its enriched uranium second important point is the centrifuges i have already told you centrifuges are used for enriching uranium so centrifuges will be reduced from 19000 to 6000 third important point is enrichment will be stopped at underground facility of fordow strict inspection by international atomic energy agency officials where is iaea iaea is in vienna austria those officials will inspect thoroughly so that iran will not take up the enrichment of uranium where atomic bombs can be made next important point is united nations arms embargo embargo means restrictions right united nations arms embargo will remain in place for 5 years and for missiles there will be embargo for 8 years these are the restrictions imposed and once these are implemented economic sanctions against iran will be removed after ensuring that these things are complied by iran then immediately what will happen economic sanctions against iran will be removed that means iran can export oil it can come into the mainstream politics 
economically, not only economically, geopolitically also, it can become a force to reckon with in Middle East. Right? And what the critics will say? The critics says that it may lead to proliferation of arms in Middle East. Second is, it may give space for Iran to make a nuclear bomb. It may lead to unrest in the Middle East, which is already into problems. Fourth point is, some critics say that it will checkmate ISIS. Right? Whatever it is, Israel and Saudi Arabia are not happy with the developments. And for the detailed discussion, next week, listen to news analysis and features. Next important issue, biggest refugee population from a single conflict in a generation. All of you are well aware, Syria is into civil strife, several warring factions within the country. Free Syrian Army, ISIS, government on the other side, civil war is going on inside the country and now the United Nations Organization, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. You may ask where are the headquarters of United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees? United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees is based in Geneva, Switzerland. and. The organization says Syria appears to be one of the worst ever human tragedies. Conflict started in the year 2011. In the year 2011, Syria population was 23 million. Now it is 19 million. It reduced from 23 million to 19 million. 4 million people escaped from the country and they are staying as refugees in the adjacent countries. Turkey has 1.8 million refugees. The unfortunate aspect is 86% of refugees in Jordan are living below poverty line. What will happen when refugees are staying in other countries? Normally when the people escape their country, when they are staying in other countries, they are called refugees. And minimum civic communities, education, health, these are all the basic problems associated with refugee camps and 86% of refugees in Jordan are living below poverty line and 4 million people are staying as refugees in adjacent countries like Turkey, Lebanon and Jordan. Not only that, more than 7 million people are internally displaced. 7 million people internally displaced. 4 million people as refugees. So, total 11 million people are affected out of 23 million people. That means, the Syrian civil war affected around 50% of the population. That's why it's going to be one of the worst ever tragedies in the world. And 5.5 billion dollars is the money needed to help Syrian refugees. Right. Let us hope for some better sense to prevail. Right friends, look at the next miscellaneous. World Bank report says Mahatma Gandhi Narega, the world's largest public works program. Mahatma Gandhi Narega is the world's largest public works program. They told three things. I would like to tell you three important points as per the World Bank report. First is Mahatma Gandhi Narega is the world's largest public works program providing social security net to 15% of the country's population. 15% of the country's population. Second important aspect is midday meal program is the biggest school feeding program and 105 million people are getting the benefits. More than 10 crore people, basically students, more than 10 crore students are the beneficiaries of midday meal program. Third thing is Janani Suraksha Yojana, which was started in the year 2005, Janani Suraksha Yojana to improve the institutional delivery of babies, to improve the institutional delivery of babies, that's why to prevent maternal mortality as well as neonatal deaths 
and this program is reaching 78 million beneficiaries or roughly 8 crore people and these three programs are applauded by the World Bank. Mahatma Gandhi Narega, Midday Meal Scheme, Janani Suraksha Yojana. Right? Look into the next aspect. Millennium Development Goals, most successful anti-poverty movement says the United Nations. Eight Millennium Development Goals were set by United Nations in the year 2000. Please look into this slide. What are the Millennium Development Goals? And they are to be implemented by 2015. Right? And the important aspects as told by the report of the United Nations says it is the most successful anti-poverty movement in the history. That is first and foremost thing. Second important point is people living in extreme poverty reduced from 1.9 billion in 1990 to 836 million in 2015. Reduced from around 190 crores to around 83 crores. 1.9 billion to 83 crores are 836 million and you may ask what is extreme poverty a person is living with less than 1.25 dollars a day he is considered to be in extreme poverty and people under extreme poverty were reduced drastically the other important aspect is between 2000 and 2015 6.2 million malaria deaths have been averted and over 2.1 billion people that means 210 crore people have gained access to improved sanitation across the world. And if you look at India, reduced the positives and negatives. I have listed out here, you can go through this slide. I would like to tell important points. Positives are reduced poverty by half from 45% to 21.9%. Second is, this was made possible probably due to National Rural Health Mission as well as Mahatma Gandhi Narega. We have just now discussed Janani Suraksha Yojana is the scheme implemented under National Rural Health Mission. And all of you are well aware about Mahatma Gandhi Narega. Citizen is entitled for minimum 100 days of employment in rural areas. That is the crux of Mahatma Gandhi Narega. And gender parity in primary school enrollment, that is the important aspect. Gender parity, that means discrimination between Male child and female child reduced drastically. These are the positives when you look at India. But what are the negatives? Still 270 million people are in extreme poverty in our country. 270 million people are still under extreme poverty. And India is home to one quarter of world's undernourished population. One third of world's underweight children and one third of world's food insecure people. These are the negatives as far as India is concerned and positive points are extreme poverty reduced drastically, right? And look into the sports events. Owners of two IPL teams are suspended for two years. All of you are uh, well aware that this is with regard to the betting, indulgence in betting in IPL 2013. Subsequently, Supreme Court appointed a panel headed by the former Chief Justice of the country, Justice R.M. Lotha. Other two members are Justice R.V. Ravindran as well as Justice Asok Bhan. The committee gave its report. And I would like to tell you two, three important points. So first and the foremost is India Cements Limited as well as Jaipur IPL Cricket Private Limited, India Cements Limited and Jaipur IPL Cricket Private Limited. These two were suspended from IPL for two years. They cannot undertake any cricket related activities for two years. Suspension was imposed for two years. IPL owned Chennai Super Kings when the betting took place and this Jaipur IPL Cricket Private Limited owns the Rajasthan Royals team and Supreme Court said the order given by this committee headed by Justice R.M. Lotha will be final, will be 
binding on both the parties and please look into this important slide the committee passed severe strictures against gurunath mayyappan as well as raj kundra you may ask who is gurunath mayyappan gurunath mayyappan is the son in law of n srinivasan head of icl which owned the chennai super kings and mr srinivasan was the former president of bcci also and gurunath mayyappan because he participated in the betting he was involved in betting two strictures were passed and punishment was imposed during his lifetime he should not participate in any type of bcci activities he, throughout his lifetime he should not participate in any type of cricket activities and suspended for participation in the sport of cricket for a maximum period of 5 years suspended for participation in sport of cricket for 5 years a similar punishment was imposed against raj kundra raj kundra is the part owner of rajasthan royals team right that means both of them are suspended otherwise a life ban from being involved with the bcci in any type of cricket matches right and at the same time they were suspended for participation in the sport of cricket for a maximum period of 5 years right friends look at the last issue sania mirza creates history by winning women's doubles title at wimbledon sania mirza and martina hingis won the women's doubles title at uh, wimbledon this is the first time an indian winning the women's doubles title right and second important aspect is mixed doubles was won by leander pace of india and martina hingis of uh, switzerland men's singles was won by Novak Djokovic and Serena Williams of United States of America won the women's singles and please don't forget this is her 21st title 21st grand slam title you may ask who is heading margaret court of australia so far won 24 titles and 22 titles were won by steffi graf and now serena williams won her 21st grand slam title and please don't forget serena williams now became the oldest woman to win the grand slam title right and with this let us conclude this week's important events that is lecture part please do join for news analysis and features where we discussed greek crisis or greece crisis in detail and please do join for questions and answers sessions of general as well as banking have a nice day thank you